Did you know that in his entire 22 years thus far, playing in the NFL, that Tom Brady has never been the highest paid player in the NFL. What's cracking, everybody? My name is Smart Guy Matt Zapala here. Hailing to you from Gillette Stadium here in Foxborough, Massachusetts. And I tell you, the last two and a half days here has been an absolute blast here as our leadership team here did a mastermind with our CEO, founder Patrick Bet David, here at Gillette Stadium where we watched the nine current episodes of the Man in the Arena documentary. Now, I've been through a lot of documentaries. I've been through a lot of listen, documentaries, motivate me and inspire me because I am able to read into people's stories because you can kind of pierce the veil and see the story behind all the glory. And uh, we watched the Last Dance documentary with the, uh, with the Chicago Bulls in uh, the Breakers Hotel in uh, Palm Beach, Florida. And these last two and a half days, we've been able to watch the nine episodes of the Man in the Rain documentary featuring Tom Brady and his story from going from Michigan all the way right down to the pros and his, all the Super Bowls. And to top it all off, we got to spend time with a couple of his teammates, which was um, uh, Ninkovich and uh, Matt Light, who was his uh, tackle, who, won three, who we run three Super Bowls with. And uh, Ninkovich, who he run two Super Bowls with, as he was playing linebacker uh, during the greatest Super Bowl of all time, which was the Atlanta Falcons versus the uh, the Patriots. But nonetheless, I want to share with you some things I thought were very interesting in how Tom Brady actually went about making his money. Did you realize in Tom Brady's career, he made about two hundred ninety-three million playing quarterback in the NFL for twenty-two seasons, the most of any football player in history. And also, he earned about $180 million over the past 22 years out of endorsements, licensing appearances, and memorabilia. So you put that all together, Tom Brady's total earnings will be approximately $473, $474 million by being a professional athlete, close to half a billion dollars playing professional sports. And some of Tom Brady's endorsements are Under Armour, 1.95%, UGG, and Upper Deck. And Tom Brady has also launched a couple brands called the Brady Brand, a fitness company called TB12, and an NFT platform autograph, which all were listed in as a retirement plan. And also in 2021, Tom Brady has also invested in cryptocurrency, more specifically a cryptocurrency exchange called FTX, along with Trevor Lawrence and Odell Beckham Jr. I just thought it was interesting for a guy like Tom Brady to go about his career, not necessarily getting the top contract from the NFL team, from the Patriots, but he always went about saying, hey, listen, I know I'm gonna be here de demanding, commanding top price, but what can I do to lower my salary to make sure that the team can still attract other studs and players and weapons to make sure that the teams we play are championship caliber type teams because you know the salary cap really restricts a lot of top talent to come to a certain team because there's only so much money a team can pay out in any given year. I did ask Ben, who was Tom Brady's business manager, about how Tom goes about saying yes or no to opportunities. So it's a very interesting story I want to share with you. He was presented an opportunity to be a spokesperson and a front man to be uh, presenting this a donut and coffee company. And as much as you know about how Tom Brady takes care of his body, that long term, he can never say to himself, man, I really believe in this product or this category because I just don't put donuts of coffee in my body. I got to treat my body a certain way. I got to feed my body a certain way. So short term, sure, I get a paycheck. But long term, to really put my name behind a donut and coffee company, I'm not sure I can really believe in that product. So at that point, he said no. So I also asked, what is Tom's checklist to making sure a brand or product offering meets his criteria, what he stands for. He says, there's three things that Tom stands for. Number one is obviously the superhero on the field. There's a speak to that guy. There's an inspire championship mentality. There's an inspire being a superhero in any aspect of life, what he's expressed on the football field. Does it express and magnify that area of his life? The next category is, does it express who Tom is as a father, as a husband, as a family man? Does it go into expressing that? Does it edify what he stands for in that category? of his life. Then the third category of the checklist of making decisions who to do business with and who he endorses or who he goes about um, hanging his name with is does it speak to the luxury, the upscale lifestyle that Tom Brady likes to live? Does it speak to Tom Brady in a suit? Does it magnify that? So if any opportunity has these three checklists, boom, 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 Tom Brady most likely is all over. And one of his favorite deals was his deal with Ashton Martin spoke to all those three things. It wasn't Lamborghini, it wasn't Ferrari. Interesting how he chose Ashton Martin. It's also interesting how he chose his deal with Subway because Subway may not be necessarily the TB12 diet or things that he actually puts in his body, but he also saw that as an opportunity to reach out to people that were putting those foods in their body, but finding a way to have them know more about him, more about his brand, about what he does with TB12, and say, hey, maybe I need to convert to another way of eating. It's interesting how he took that decision to work together with Subway. And to wrap things up, 
We've been really inspired here the last two and a half days here with our leadership team, masterminding here at Gillette Stadium, actually in the arena of which Tom Brady played. I was goofing around and having a blast here at the arena. But uh, there's a couple things that I took away, a few things I took away in terms of bigger commitments in your life. So if you want bigger commitments in your finances, bigger commitments to your family, bigger commitments, bigger dreams and goals, aspirations, because big dreams require bigger commitments. They also bring in bigger distractions. But here are three questions you gotta ask yourself in the journey towards bigger goals, dreams, and commitments. And they are, so number one, do you have a 100% commitment to your spouse, to your partner? And is it also retroactive to your company, to your team? Do you have a 100% commitment to the most important people in your life that helps you get towards your next goal? Whether it be your finances, your career, your business, your athletic endeavors, your ministry activities, whatever the case may be, do you have a 100% commitment from all the most important people in your life at that point? Number two, what are some of the other obsessions you might have, some of the talents and interests that you have that sadly you must minimize? Because if you want to magnify a certain area of your life, you want to magnify this goal, you want to magnify your financial reward, you want to magnify this endeavor, other aspirations and businesses and potential streams of income, they've got to minimize. So therefore you can completely focus in 100% attention on that one thing, that 100% obsession that gets you specifically to where you want to go. I was just asked this morning on uh, one of our coffee sessions, here on Zoom, because this guy's got a uh, a bunch of businesses. He's got a, a popcorn company. He's got a bunch of other businesses got going on, and he just stumbled across getting involved in the insurance industry. He says, "Matt, how do I get involved and get established with the financial reward that I see in the insurance industry? But I've got these other business endeavors. I don't want to lose momentum in." And the counsel and advice was very simple. I remember seeing a clip of Steve Harvey talk about why he stepped down from stand-up comedy. He's one of the greatest stand-up comedies of all time. And why did he step down from comedy? Because he found a greater opportunity in leveraging his brand into TV. That he can make a bigger impact into TV. And today, Steve Harvey not only is a host for Family Feud, but he also owns the rights to Family Feud Global. So he's not only reaching a United States audience, he's reaching a worldwide audience by ownership in Family Feud because he made a very tough decision stepping down from what he loved, which was comedy in order to magnify his impact and purpose what he felt was now evident in his life so when you're going out there and seeing hey i need to focus on this focus on this focus no you need to focus on one thing minimize the focus on other things minimize those obsessions to other things but magnify it to that one or two things that get you leapfrog towards your goals that much further and faster and last but not least number three what do you got to give up not what you need to sacrifice but what do you need to give up is it limiting beliefs is it behaviors? Is it a set of actions? Do you get angry too fast? Do you have a high temper? What are some things that you need counseling on? The things that you need help with? Listen, I'm, I'm talking to myself coming out the military, PTSD, right? Single father, bankrupt, divorce, all those different things. There's so many things I had to change and shift in my life just to get me to make 100,000 a year, just to get me to 250,000, just to get to 500,000, let alone seven figures and, and beyond. But along the way, there's certain things I knew I could not take with me to the next phase of my life. There's things I need to leave behind, set that back down. Okay, I experienced that. Thank you for the lessons learned. Set that back down. Boom, release that. So therefore I can get to the next phase of my life and pick up another bag for the next journey forward. So what do you have to give up? Not sacrifice, but what will you have to give up? So with that being said, guys, I appreciate you tuning in to this quick little brief episode here on the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel. So before I let you go, make sure you check out these two videos because our channel is dedicated to helping you think like a millionaire, to help you strategize like a millionaire so therefore you can become a first generation cash flow faith-based millionaire what are your thoughts what are your questions what's your feedback you agree you don't agree put it in the comment section below i read and respond all the time if you haven't done so and you found value in this video make sure you click like if you found value in a couple of our other videos make sure you click subscribe and make sure you hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode from foxborough massachusetts i'm your mighty smart guy and until we meet again Cantillo smart, Cantillo smart, and be money smart today.